Hello and welcome to Nature Day's Outdoor Learning Resources, sponsored by the Gower Society. Now I want to read you a story about a tree. Why the Ash Has Black Buds by William Fiennes. The trees have always had some idea of what happens to them when they die. In forests they saw their neighbours toppled by wind or age and rot into earth and their roots sent up descriptions of peat and coal in vast beds and seams. Later, when humans came along, trees saw the stockades and the carts pulled by horses, the chairs and the tables set out in the garden and quickly put two and two together. Trees growing beside rivers saw themselves in the hulls and masts of boats and trees in orchards understood that the ladders propped against them had once been trees. And when men approached with axes to fell them, the trees recognised the handles. Trees often wondered what their particular fate might be. Would they subside into the long sleep of coal, or blaze for an hour in a cottage grate, or find themselves reconfigured as handle, hurdle, post, shaft, stake, joist, beam, or something more elaborate and rare, an abacus? a chess piece, a harpsichord. And out of those dreams, a rumour moved among the trees of the world like a wind. Not quite understood at first, it was so strange. A rumour that when they died, instead of being burned, planed, planked, skimmed, sharpened, many trees would be pulped. This was an entirely new idea to trees, whose self-image was all to do with trunk, sturdiness, backbone, form. But trees are good at getting the hang of things, and soon they understood that from pulp would come the white leaves humans called paper, and that these leaves would be bound into books. And after a short season of anxiety in which conifers shed uncharacteristic quantities of needles, the trees came to terms with the new possibility in the range of their afterlives. Yes, the trees recognised themselves in paper, in books, just as they recognised themselves in all the other things that hadn't been thought of quite yet, like bedsteads and bagpipes and bonfires. Not to mention violins, cricket bats, toothpicks, clothes pegs, chopsticks and misery cords. Men and women would sit in the shade of trees, reading books, and the trees, dreaming of all that was to come, saw that they were were the books as well as the chairs the men and women sat in, and the combs in the women's hair, and the shiny handles of the muskets, and the hoops the children chased across the lawns. The trees took pride in the idea of being a book. They thought a book was a noble thing to become. If you had to become anything, a terrible bore to be a rafter after all, and a wheel would mean such a battering. Though of course the travel was a bonus. And what tree in its right mind would wish to be a rack, coffin, crucifix, gallows? One tree was more excited than all the rest, and that was the ash. The ash is such an inviting, feathery shade, When men and women first had books to take into the shade of the trees, they often chose the shade of an ash. The ash would look down at these people, reading and see that they were discovering new regions inside themselves, and notice how when they stood up and left the jurisdiction of its branches, they had changed, as if buds inside them were becoming coming into leaf, and the ash saw that this change was a property of the marks on the paper, and that paper was the only leaf with worlds in it. Soon ash trees were discussing their phenomenon all over the place, whispering about books, in Mancuria and Poland and the Pennines, passing information from grove to grove until ash trees across North America in the East and Western Palearctic were sighing and swaying with thoughts of words and pens and poems and printing presses and Odysseus 
and the songs of songs. Sir Ash Trees dreamed of becoming books themselves one day, even though they would be much in demand as firewood and prized as material for oars, hockey sticks and the chassis frames of Morgan motor cars. Sometimes, dreaming ahead, they saw men and women sitting beneath them, writing, writing in notebooks and diaries, writing letters of love and consolation, writing stories. And the ash tree wanted to be that too. Not just the book, but the writing in it. The words that carried the worlds. They saw the men and women holding their pens and the ink that came out of them onto the paper. And although they didn't have hands, they tried to curl their branches into fingers that might hold pens. And they dreamed it so vividly that the tips of their fingers turned black with ink as they waved against the blank white page of the sky, trying to write on it. Look closely, the ash tree has black buds and the branches bend upwards at their tips towards the whiteness. Now my challenge for you today is to come up with your own story about trees. Now if you've watched the winter woodland walk that we did last week, then you know all about how to identify the trees in the winter time. So see if you can use that as inspiration for writing a story about one of those tree species. Now the one I just read you was all about the ash tree. But maybe you could come up with one about the oak tree. And think about why the oak wants to have so many of those buds at the end of its branches, as opposed to all the others that only have one single terminal bud. Or maybe it's going to be the hazel and why the hazel has all those lenticels down its branch, all those little lines. Maybe their eyes looking out so that the tree can see what's going on. Or maybe you want to talk about the beech tree and those really spiky, long, thin, slender buds. Maybe those buds are pointing because they're pointing away from the branch. Maybe it's warning of danger. So have a look at those different trees and see if you can come up with a story like the ash story that I've read you on how to identify those trees, but a reason for that. Because you remember things a lot better if you've got a story behind them. And there's a story in amongst all of us and in amongst our trees as well. Now, if you do write a story, I'd love to hear it. So please do tweet hashtag Nature Days or put it on the Facebook page. And I look forward to seeing you at our next Outdoor Learning Challenge.